I consider growing old as one of the most beautiful journey and coaster ride one can experience. Years of lessons, knowledge, and wisdom attained, experiencing the highest of high and lowest of low, and learning to accept the shortcomings of all things. When you get to the old age where you can almost see the light, the acceptance of it is bliss. But sometimes even the elderly gets robbed by it, viciously and suddenly. Covered under a pillow, you wonder, who is doing this to me? And the answer most times would shock you. More often, it's a loved one. And here are their stories. Tucked in a quiet suburban neighborhood, there lived Mr. Anthony Tomaselli. He was 85 years old at the time and lived in a well-kept townhome in Palm Harbor, Florida. There he lived a comfortable, typical life guided by his predictable daily routine. Every evening he would watch Wheel of Fortune, then he'd go to a nearby beach where he would never miss a sunset. Afterwards, he would return home and read his prayer cards both in the languages of Italian and English. As the darkness of the night approached, he'd prepare his favorite cocktail a vodka and a Diet Coke before heading to bed. Unfortunately, Anthony Tomaselli's routine was about to change when his long-term live-in girlfriend passes away. Anthony's daughters took over his routine. His daughters, 65-year-old Mary Beth Tomaselli and 64-year-old Linda Robert, were soon telling everyone that he was often confused, claiming that he was forgetful, urging everyone involved in Anthony Tomaselli's life that he belonged in an assisted living facility, but Anthony disagreed. He wanted to stay exactly where he felt he belonged, in his home, in his townhouse. They continued to try and push him to move until suddenly they didn't have to. Linda Roberts called emergency services that morning of March 6, 2015 and told the operators that she and her sister had found their father dead on his couch. Linda told them that she attempted to perform CPR on her father, but to no avail. Any type of intervention were unsuccessful according to the sisters, and given his old age, the coroners classified the death as due to natural causes. The Pinella County followed suit of the reports and closed the case. Unfortunately, that was the furthest from the truth. The two sisters planned to rid of their father and the premeditation began on March 5th of 2015, when Anthony's doctors found a large mass on Anthony's lungs. The sisters assumed this to be the return of his previous lung cancer, even though the doctors said that whatever was growing on his lungs were not at all terminal. Mary Beth and Linda decided to take matters into their own hands and end his life. With Mary Beth sharing the pathetic reason later, and I quote, they couldn't watch him suffer. Police documents also stated that on that night, Linda gave Mary Beth's 41-year-old daughter, Lauren Johnson, who happened to be living with her grandfather, Anthony, at the time, one of Linda's prescribed sleeping pills so that she wouldn't wake up. Then after doing that, Mary Beth mixed 15 more of Linda's pills into Anthony's routine evening cocktail. They initially thought that the amount they gave him would be enough, but it only made him extremely loopy. So this is when they decided to literally use their own hands instead. Linda and Mary Beth took a pillow and placed it over his mouth to suffocate Anthony, their own father. Little did they know, Anthony was willing to fight back. Then, during the struggle, Linda directed Mary Beth, telling her that they had to get a washcloth and put it in his mouth, and one of them were going to have to hold his nose and finish what they had started, which they unfortunately did. Their father, Anthony, had passed in the hands of his own daughters. 
They proceeded to remove the rag from his mouth and then went to bed. And that next morning was when they staged the scene, pretended to do CPR, and called 911. Linda and Mary Beth were also so quick to cremate the body of their father, making any examination of his body pretty much impossible, which is most likely the reason why they got away with this crime in 2015. Then, four years later, the case was suddenly reopened, and the sisters were being accused of murdering their father. So what exactly happened? It was February of 2019 when a man who was significantly sexually familiar with both sisters called the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, revealing to them that he had a video on his phone that the authorities needed to watch. After the police watched the video, they were shocked and it wasn't long before the case was reopened. As the video played, it became more and more incriminating. At one point, you could hear Linda's voice say, I can't take it anymore. I killed my father. She told this directly to the man who was secretly recording. In the video, she continues to say, Well, we did. We did it together. And the we she spoke of was her and her sister, Mary Beth. This recording was what jump-started and reopened investigation into the death of their father, Anthony Tomaselli. Because of Anthony's old age, many assumed it was due to natural causes. Because there were absolutely zero signs of struggle and no foul play was indicated by the original crime scene. It was the perfect murder, said Sheriff Gualtieri at the March 2019 press conference. The man who provided the evidence to the police knew both of the women. In fact, he had been intimate with both of them. He initially met Mary Beth first and began a short-term sexual relationship with her. Mary Beth then introduced him to Linda, and he then began a much longer-term sexual relationship with Linda. He said that Linda confessed to him as a desperate attempt to keep her relationship after he tried to break it off with her. He stated, I think she's sad and lonely and wanted to get it off her chest. Furthermore, he described her as a desperate woman trying to get her man back. Fortunately, after hearing the confession, the man felt that it was important for him to relay this information to the police. According to Detective Nelson de Leon, he was nervous to meet with us. He was worried about getting in trouble with the recording. Both Detective de Leon and Michael Bailey assured him that he wasn't culpable, but also stated that they couldn't use his unauthorized recording as evidence in the case. So with that said, they decided to fit him with a wire, and off they sent him to meet once again with Linda that night as the police listened in. A few days later, they put a wire back on him and decided to send him to meet with Mary Beth, the first flame of the two. He began with, you know, your sister told on you about what you guys did. And when he said this, Mary Beth looked like she was hit with a ton of bricks. According to the boyfriend, Mary Beth immediately spilled her guts and blamed Linda for most of it. Mary Beth said it was mostly Linda's idea. She basically kept blaming her sister with everything that they have done. And she claimed that she had only gone along with it. Both Linda and Mary Beth were arrested on March 5, 2019. Both Linda and Mary Beth negotiated a plea deal to avoid trial. And because of this, Linda was sentenced in March of 2021, and Mary Beth was sentenced just a month after in April. Detective Nelson de Leon stated, They knew he was dead, and they played along. However, both sisters argued that they were just trying to put him out of his misery. Detective Michael Bailey argues that their statements were inconsistent because there was no misery. Anthony wasn't experiencing any pain. He had very minor issues, and the growth on his neck was even confirmed by doctors to be non-terminal. Prosecutor Kuskina stated, it was very unconventional how this case came about. We wouldn't have been able to solve this without law enforcement and the man who brought the recording to the authorities, and I commend him for that. The man said, I'm not afraid of anything but it was bone chilling. 
Having someone telling me they killed somebody. The end of the life. Hearing about how it happened. There's really nothing like it. It's not a movie. It's real life. The man who recorded the conversation said that he decided to turn the woman in because, and I quote, you can't end somebody's life, period. It doesn't matter if they have five days, five months, five minutes. You're not the arbiter of when it's time for someone to die. And while Linda and Mary Beth were in an interrogation room, left alone to speak with one another, she told Mary Beth, I can't believe I had told him. Both Mary Beth and Linda pleaded guilty to second degree murder, and Mary Beth was sentenced to 15 years in prison, while Linda got 20 years. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys haven't already, please hit that bell notification button so that you guys could get notified for our next video upload.